Put some Morton Joe 2.5 here back with another review, and today we're going to look at Grunt. Uh, I tried to upload a little more often, but uh, unfortunately this week has been a little hectic. We had a ice storm and several things going on. I had to uh, go help my pop up at stove in, so uh, I've been a little uh, busy. So, but finally we're back, you know, do another review and. Today we're taking a look at Grunt. Okay, so this is Grunt, G.I. Joe's first infantry trooper. It was first available in 1982, and this figure was available in 1982 only, as the uh, all the 82 figures were updated with the uh, 1.5 swivel arm articulation. Now there was a total of three different versions of Grunt in the vintage era. There was the um this version, version one, version 1.5, which unfortunately I don't have, but I do have. Uh, version 2 here, which is the uh, Falcon Glider Pilot Grunt, which is, which uses the same body as version 1.5, but in uh, version 1's colors. But, um, now the third version of Grunt um, was, uh, not, was first available in 1991, I believe. And uh, that version is a big departure from the uh, first three. And we'll talk about that figure when the time comes. Starting with his accessories, we'll start with his backpack. And, uh, which uh, the card contents, call, let me see here, I can't remember off the top of my head. The card contents call a combat pack. I don't know why I couldn't remember that, but I can stop over. So this is what the card contents call a combat pack. And, uh, see, it's a, it's a small backpack. Now, my uh, version one figure here, uh, this one it doesn't want to fit in, and I'm not for sure exactly why, because this is you know the version one backpack, you know, and this is the version one figure. So this my figure may have a problem with the back or something. Maybe somebody put the wrong back on there, or made a hole just wallowed out, you know, from it being put in a lot. Because I have an extra version one grunt, and as you can see, the backpack stays in place on it. So, I think it's just a problem with the back on this other one. His next accessory, what the card, card contents call, is an M16 rifle, which uh, this is what that says. And this is uh, kind of, to me, is a little bit undersized for the real uh, M16. But, you know, it looks, you know, like you would think an M16. It's got the triangular foregrip, you know, a very Vietnam era looking M16. Now, there was a, a lighter gray version of this rifle released in an accessory pack, as you can see here. And, uh, the original rifle is the, the dark black rifle right there, so if you're looking for a grunt online, you want to make sure it has a dark black rifle and not the gray accessory pack version. Now his third and last but not least accessory is his helmet. And his helmet is a, you know, a green helmet, and uh, this helmet was reused many times in the uh, G.I. Joe era. So I'll show you some examples here. Uh, here's four examples. I have a bunch of other helmets I could show you, but or I actually had on hand right here. The grunt is in the one in front there. And then the green one behind grunts is Roadbox helmet, which is the only one that doesn't have peg holes. But the same helmet was reused for Duke as well. Then the one behind Roadbox helmet is Short Fuse's helmet, which has a visor. And the visor is also used on Grand Slam and Flash. And the helmet behind it is Breaker's helmet, which has, you know, the headset plugged in. it. So I forgot to put the line up, but uh, uh, grunt version 2 uses the same helmet. Just in a uh, in the uh, tan plastic, but um, you see, mine's a little bit uh, warped a little bit. But I'm not sure why, but it, it is. So let's take a look at Grunt's articulation. He had the standard articulation for GI yeah, Joe figures in 1982. He had a swivel at the head, a hinge at the shoulder, and a swivel. He also had a single hinge at the elbow. No swivel arm articulation yet. He also was the figure was held together with a rubber o-ring which looped around on the inside of the figure so you got a pretty good range of motion there you get a ball joint at the hip and a bend at the knee let's take a look at the sculpt design and colors of grunt starting with his head now grunt's head was uh, a generic head that was reused for grand slam and zap and uh which but i think it, though both of those had different hair colors but you know not a unique head it was reused and he's got uh, brown hair, brown eyebrows, and his eyes are painted brown. 
Mine, the nose is a little messed up right there. But, um, going down to his, his, uh, chest here. He has a standard green shirt, all with brown suspenders and a, a grenade and a knife sculpt in there. And his sleeves, he has a, like a pouch on his one arm and another pouch here. Going down, his, he's got cuffed sleeves. Unfortunately, mine has a broken thumb. He has, uh, the crotch piece that was reused that was used in the A2 run. Now, the uh, waist piece in, on the 1.5 figures was actually a different waist piece. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any of those to show you, but I do have you know Grunt version two, which is basically 1.5 run, you know, just in different colors. 1.5 would have been in version one's colors, but you can see the it had the same waist piece as the 1.5. You can see it's it's a little more different. It's more tapered in, and it's got like a different. Uh, belt buckle and uh, it's got more t detail on the pocket on his rear end there so uh but I still actually prefer the original waist piece myself just just nostalgic I guess and see the suspenders continue in the back I forgot to, to say that it also says 1982 Hasbro Baden Hong Kong on his butt there now on, on the other one it says 82 to 83 Hasbro made Hong Kong so you know a little bit different text there but, uh, going down to his legs, he has, um, standard green legs, got two pouches that are unpainted. Now, uh, short fuse over here, as you can see, short fuse has the same legs, of course, but the only difference is, you know, his pouch and, uh, both his pouches on his legs are, are painted brown, as grunts, you know, are unpainted, so, if, uh, you're looking for grunting, you see these Legs with pain details, that means they're the wrong legs. Those were uh, short pieces of legs, so this might be something to look out for. Which the boots are, are exactly the same color and everything, so it would probably work. Yeah, that would look cool with the pain details, but you don't want a proper front, you need to find the one with the right legs. But as you can see, his boots are very standard boots for 82 figures. As you can see, Grunt and Stalker re use the exact same body, but um. Just in a different color plastic. Now the dark green figures were pretty sturdy and you know were harder to break than the, than the others. You can see my grunt does have a broken thumb. Yeah, it did happen, but it wasn't as uh, as bad as the light green plastic. You can see stalker right there made out of the light green plastic. The light green plastic is extremely brittle and and is very fragile and breaks very easily. So um, and so that is the reason why I uh, do not put stalker on a figure stand. Because I don't want to risk breaking the back of his heel off. Which, you know, I can put Grunt on a figure stand, no problem. If you remember my Stalker review, I used Grunt to demonstrate the articulation. Let's take a look at Grunt's file card. The, the file card was printed on the back of the box in which the you know, figure was packaged. And it says Infantry Trooper, codename Grunt. File name Robert W. Graves. There's a serial number. Primary, in, primary military specialty infantry. Secretary Military Specialty, Small Arms Armorer, Artil Artillery Coordinator, Birthplace Columbus, Ohio, Grade E4. Familiar with all NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms, as well as domestic civilian arms, graduated at Advanced Infantry Training, finished at top 10 of his class, qualified expert in M14, M16, and 1911A1 auto pistol. Grunt is highly motivated, systematic individual. He is a stand-up guy who doesn't blow his cool in a firefight. Which, uh, I believe Grunt's file card was the first file card ever written. And you, 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 you can kind of tell because it doesn't really tell you much about him. It just kind of tells you his specialty, you know, how he's, you know, trained. And it doesn't really tell you his personality or how he is or... Which, you know, his code name should tell you all that anyway because, you know, you know, a Grunt is, you know, the... Standard soldier that has no authority you know, that goes into battle. And how Grunt was used in GI yeah, Joe media, he uh, appeared in many uh, issues of the GI Joe comic books. Where for a long time he was the face of the you know of, of GI Joe, you know until uh, Duke took that place and Grunt kind of got uh, kicked aside. He also appeared in the Sumo M.A. series, which he is more of a background character in the Sumo M.A. series. He didn't really have a whole uh, why well, he really didn't have any speaking lines. Well, uh, he did get the spotlight in a few episodes, which, uh, the most notable episode was Worlds Without End, uh, Parts 1 and Part 2. 
which those episodes were very well written and for the first episodes in the series to actually show uh, death sort of as you know in the uh, in the episode grunt and Steeler uh walk up on their uh their uh skeletons in the alternate universe and uh, like i said those, both those episodes are very good and very well written and Steeler and grunt both uh stay in the alternate universe which kind of ends grunt's character in the show which was actually a good end for grunt's character but in the big animated series you know this uh they bring back grunt but it's never explained how he came back from the alternate reality but in the DK May series, he appeared in his version three uniform as as you know when that when that show was airing. So that's probably why they used you know the version three one because most kids you know in 1991 who bought Grunt then were the same kids buying Grunt in '82 and '83. So you know which why why they made a third version you know I don't know because like I said most kids in '90 uh, and who bought Grunt in '82 would have been grown up by you know '91. So what do I think of Grunt version one overall? You know, it's, you know, uh, I wouldn't say it's, you know, uh, it's not a bottom tier, and, uh, which I would, it, it, most people would probably put it in the middle tier, but I would probably go ahead and say it, it's in the top tier, but, you know, but barely, because, you know, it, it, he's made up of entirely reused parts, there's no, nothing unique about this figure, and, uh, was originally, they were supposed to have all unique heads, and then they started, they, Cut, cut that as a cost cutting measure, which you know a a uh, cost cutting measure not for the better. And um, which if this was actually Grunt's you know unique head, um, I I, I I don't know, but um, but still you know I I really like this figure. And Grunt is you know like the original you know action soldier. You know he's like you know, like he's called you know, a Grunt. You know, but you know I but I, you know, I, I enjoyed this figure and I still and, and I actually still do. So if you like this video and want to see more, give me a thumbs up. That'll help me out a lot. And yeah, hit the subscribe button. Till next time.